When you think of West Virginia's best-known mineral resource, you probably think coal. <laughs> but that wasn't always the case. In fact, if you go back to the mid-1800s, West Virginia and the Kanawha Valley in particular was actually the largest salt producing region of the United States. Hundreds of wells along the Kanawha River produce salt on an industrial scale, more than three million bushels a year. Now, one local family is reviving that tradition in a much smaller and more environmentally friendly way. The J.Q. Dickinson Salt Works in Malden produces sea salt, which seems like a pretty neat trick considering the lack of beachfront property in West Virginia. Note, that salt comes from an ocean trapped beneath our feet. From the outside, it looks like a greenhouse, but what's growing inside isn't flowers or vegetables, it's crystals of salt. Inside these sun houses, salt brine fills these shallow trays where it slowly evaporates. It's, it's really a, a three-step process. So you've got the evaporation, and then once this brine reaches a certain salinity level, we then move it to a separate another greenhouse. We spread the brine really thin out there and then that's when you see the crystallization. So you got evaporation, crystallization, and then we process the salt. From wellhead to finished product, the process takes about five weeks. It's a very hands-on process and it can be pretty hot work too. Afternoon temperatures inside the sun houses can reach 150 degrees in the summer. The salt will crystallize in these beds and so usually in the mornings when it's cooler, we come out and we harvest all of the salt. We uh, scrape it all together and then we put it into these flower pots to drain because we want it to be as dry as we can get it when we bring it inside. Um, we do more drying inside, but this way we keep as much of the brine and later the nagari in the same bed so that we can harvest that later as well and keep making more salt. The well at J.Q. Dickinson is about 350 feet deep. That's much shallower than the 1,000 to 1,500 feet deep wells drilled all along the river when the Kanawha Valley salt industry was at its peak. But it's deep enough to tap the mineral richness that lies below. The source is actually from an ancient ocean. It's called the Ipidus Ocean. It's anywhere from 400 to 600 million years old. And I think the source varies depending on where you are in the eastern um, part of the United States, but you can find it as far north as Michigan. Uh, probably comes down to Kentucky, Virginia, North Carolina. So it just so happens that it's bowling here, so it's a little more prevalent. And uh, so it's a uh, very rich source. And it's that source that makes this salt so special. I like to think of salt as like wines from around the world. They give you an expression of the earth from which they're grown. And um, our salt uh, flavor profile comes from the minerality in it and while it's 95% sodium chloride that 5% of trace minerals is different from here than it is from anywhere else in the world any other source so that would make that's what makes our salt um, stand out. Lewis and Nancy are the seventh generation of their family to operate the salt works here in Malden. The original Dickinson salt makers first drilled for brine on the property in 1817. There were several factors that were involved in our decision to start this business back and revive, revive our family's salt business. Uh, one was, uh, the major one is the, the movement of chefs and consumers toward very naturally made local products and the demand for that is, is really growing as consumers want more and more naturally grown and produced products. Um, also, there are more consumers and chefs that have more than one salt in their pantry and they're um, more educated about what those salts mean and, and the flavor varieties that you can get. Um, also, with our deep family heritage, we thought, okay, with that too, it was sort of an aha moment. We, we couldn't not start this business again. Using just the sun and wind to make salt might not be the fastest way to do it, but these artisans aren't really concerned about speed. Well, we're small batch. We're intensive on quality as opposed to quantity, but we do make quite a bit of salt. Um, our season is eight to nine months because we're not producing much salt in the winter, but last year we made about 6,000 pounds of salt. Uh, this year we hope to make at least seven. So, but we're selling it by the ounce, so it's, that's a lot more than you think. So our supply's there and the demand's growing, so um, we feel pretty good about it. 
We wanted to have as little environmental impact as possible and be part of a sustainable food system. So it was very important to us to come up with a production method that spoke to all those things. And um, solar evaporation in greenhouses seemed to be the way to go. It's our responsibility as humans on the earth. The folks at JQ Dickinson say they're even looking into solar panels to run their pumps and fans to make the entire operation powered by the sun. You can find out more by visiting the website jqdsalt.com. There's even some interesting recipes on there.